Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You know, a ranger has to not only be a jack of all trades, but a master as well. One of the sciences he must have some knowledge of is, of course, botany. And he must also know something of soil chemistry. Poor soils make poor trees, and a good ranger should be able to distinguish the symptoms as they make themselves apparent. Right now, Bill, Henry, Gray Wolf, and Stumpy are out in the forest taking soil samples, which they'll deliver to the lab at the State University for analysis. Stumpy's a little unhappy as he drives a pick into the frozen ground. Here's the story, The Old Die Hard. Time you should be digging soil samples. I never seen the beat. I just as well be digging hunks of granite as this stuff. <coughs> you get the pick in the ground, you can't get it out. <coughs> you get it out, you can't get it back in. It's just like digging into a bunch of bear traps. Stumpy's really singing a sad <coughs> song over there, Bill. <coughs> He's sure unhappy. I hear him, pal. In a way, I can't help but agree with him. Now, you watch. Just tell him we've got enough samples now. Hey, Stump. Bill says you can stop. Uh, what's that you said? Uh, look at big smile he have on face. He plenty happy now. <laughs> I knew if I complained enough, you'd take pity on me and make me quit digging this here concrete. Why couldn't we do this at any other time of the year except the winter time, Bill? Uh, not too easy, then. <laughs> Okay, fellas, you can quit the digs. I get the point. I wish you had my aching back, too, sonny. That there ice I was standing on had its slippery side up. Say, Bill, just why are we digging out these samples now, anyhow? Well, because there must be something in the soil in this area that's affecting the trees, Henry. A deficiency of some kind. It's not evident in a routine soil test. Now take these samples over to Dr. Draper at the State U and see if he can find it. Yeah, now that you mention it, some of the trees do look off color. Mm, but right, Henry. And it's not from winter either. I'll say it ain't. These here trees should be green as grass all year round. Okay, let's bundle up the samples and take them over to the lab. Scaronic solution reverts to one cc of soluble mass. Yeah, not good enough. Yeah, it looks like I'll have to try again. Hello, Doctor. <laughs> now, you don't have to call me that when we're alone, Melvin. <laughs> not when you've been calling me Gramps ever since you were knee-high to a Bunsen burner. <laughs> Well, it's sure hard for me to get used to calling you doctor. It sounds kind of cold. Uh, well, it's uh, it's for dignity's sake, Melvin. <laughs> I wasn't very dignified when we had pillow fights not too many years ago, was I? <laughs> well, dignity or no dignity, Gramps, I think you're the best granddad a fella ever had. Say, I better get working on that artificial protosynthesis. I'd rather you worked on that new explosive formula, Melvin. You can start your own experiment as soon as you've completed uh, developing my new theory of hypo-explosive reactions. But, Gramps, I, I uh, just want to... Melvin, wanna... let's not start the day off with an argument. I have too much vital data to observe to get upset. Besides, uh, we shouldn't be quarreling, should we? Okay, Gramps, you win. I'll get started as soon as I change into my lab clothes. Boy, it's a good thing we can drive up to the chemistry building. <laughs> this campus must be a mile long right here. <laughs> you said it, Bill. 
Well, let's get those samples into the lab. Well, I've got one box. Well, I guess I'll have to carry the other one, since you seem so reluctant to carry both of them. Well, I like that. <laughs> let's go, pal. It's good of you to bring me that soil, Bill. <laughs> That's not what Stumpy said when he was helping us dig it up with a pickaxe, Doctor. Yeah, he'd have used dynamite if uh, he could have gotten away with it. <laughs> hello, Phil, Henry. Oh, hello, Mel. Hi, Mel. How's the up-and-coming young assistant to Professor Draper? I'm not quite sure. I'll have to ask Gramps about that. Hey, you sound a bit discouraged, Melvin. You aren't having trouble with the explosive derivations, are you? Well, yes, I am. It seems Melvin, I... how many times do we have to go over the basic proponents of the theory? I don't know, sir. It just don't seem to stick in my head. I... Hey! Hey! Hey, what was that? What, what exploded? My experiment. Oh, let's get over there. Henry, grab that fire extinguisher and make it fast. Give the wall a little more fire killer, pal. Okay, Bill. Oh, boy, what a mess. It certainly is. If you'd pay half as much attention to real chemistry as you do to soil chemistry and agriculture, this never would have happened. Oh, Turn off your please, extinguisher, Gramps. Henry. Let's not open up that subject. I feel bad enough. Brad, get here. Who turned in a fire alarm? Oh, I suppose someone who heard the explosion and saw the smoke. I'll let him off and tell him everything's under control. I'll help Mel clean up this mess, Bill. I'm leaving before I have an attack of apoplexy. Oh boy, I really did it this time. Do it up brown draper, they call me. Oh, quit it, Mel. Anybody can make a mistake. Sure, Henry's right, Mel. Uh, by the way, how did the explosion occur? This new explosive I'm working on for Gramps is made from a liquid. In the process, you extract the pure explosive by an alternating cooking and cooling method. I didn't release the valve in the pressure chamber soon enough. It must have been off about three minutes. How much explosive did you have, Mel? Five cc's. Wow. If you'd used a palm, we'd be halfway to the East Coast by now. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Say, Mel... I notice some tension between you and your grandfather whenever the subject of chemistry is brought up. Is it that noticeable? Well, I'm sorry it's so obvious. It is getting to be a real problem. What is, Mel? Do you want to hear about it? Well, don't tell me unless you want to. It's really none of my business. It's a growing barrier between Gramps and me. Maybe you can help, Bill. Bill's helped a lot of people, Mel. I know. To make the story short, my grandfather and I have a deep affection for one another. After all, he's been father and mother to me since I was knee-high to a toadstool. And... Well, then, why the big problem, Mel? It's this. Gramps has his heart set on my becoming a great research chemist. That's why he's got me developing his new theory of hypo-explosives. He feels this will teach me research techniques. And uh, you don't want to follow your grandfather's footsteps, huh, Mel? No, I don't. Didn't you major in chemistry? Yes, but I minored in agriculture. I've been in 4-H ever since I was a kid. I'm crazy about it. I see. Very few people do know it because Gramps frowned on my agricultural activities... Well, what has this to do with chemistry and your grandfather, Mel? The point is, Bill, I want to be an agricultural chemist, specializing in the feeding of livestock. Well, that's a very worthy ambition. I wish my grandfather thought so. Yeah? 
Glad to hear the reports, Bill. I hope I didn't take too long. Thanks a lot, Doctor. Well, how do they look, Bill? Well, I'll have to compare them with my other charts first, pal. Then we'll know. You let me know how the comparison works out, will you, Bill? Sure, be glad to. Well, Henry and I will be running along now. See you again in a couple of months, Professor. Uh, Bill, uh, something I'd like to talk to you about. Uh, yes? Rather personal matter. It, if you've got time, it, it won't take long. Why, certainly. Well, I'll run along, Bill. I'll see you at the office. Yeah, you don't have to leave, Henry. I think you both have a pretty good idea what's on my mind. You mean Melvin? Yes, yes. As you know, Bill, I love the boy as though he were my own son. I've given him a good home, education, opportunity. And now he's got some tomfool notion about being an agricultural chemist. And it's ridiculous. Well, the lad's a born research chemist. Got the Draper blood in him. And he wants to devote his life to feeding horses and cattle. And making breakfast food for hogs and sheep. Uh, how do you want me to fit into this picture, Doctor? Well, I want you to talk to Melvin. You'd think of it, Bill. Here's a young man with the ability to be a great scientist in the field of chemistry. Then he's preparing to throw his life away on new diets for livestock. I see. Uh, you're pretty determined about what you want for Mel, Doctor. I'll make Melvin a great chemist if it's the last thing I do. CCs. Oh, Gramps. Melvin, I've just talked with Peter. He says you're going out to the ranch over the weekend. That's right. I've got to work on my feeding experiments. And what about this experiment? When are you going to complete it? The weekend would help shorten the time considerably. I know, Gramps. But I've got to weigh the cattle I've been feeding and record the data. You'll... It's got to be done this weekend or I'll throw the cycle You'll off. You'll throw the cycle off. Now, what do you think you're doing to my experiment? Oh, please, Grandfather, let's not argue. I'm sorry I can't stay. You're sorry. One of these days I'm going to give up trying to make a scientist out of you. And I wish you would. I'm tired of it. Ranger headquarters, Ranger Bill speaking. Hello, Bill. Say, I'm out at my Uncle Pete's ranch. Could you possibly come out? I, I want to talk to you. Oh, sure, Mel. I've been wanting to watch you work. I'll be out in about an hour. Thanks, Bill. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bill, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your coming out here. I have so much work to do on my feeding experiment that it would take me all of Saturday to catch up. I'm glad to come out, Mel. What is this feeding experiment you're talking about? Well, I've worked up a new feed formula for beef cattle. To make them grow faster and finish off and fill out much better than any feed on the market today. That is, I hope it will. What do you mean? Well, you see, all I have is the theory. Now I'm recording the actual growth data. You'll notice that I marked one feeding pen A and the other B. <laughs> yes, I noticed that the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess I made the letters big enough. Well, pen A has the cattle who are eating my new formula seed. And pen B cattle are being fed standard roughage and grain, plus a standard supplement feed. So now you're recording the growth made by each group of cattle to see if those eating your special feed make the gains that you say they will. Right. Now I'm getting the facts to prove or disprove my theory. If the facts prove I'm right, then I'll be able to give the agricultural world a better feed at less cost. Which, in turn, will give the rancher and farmer a higher profit. Yeah. This feed can be adapted for other livestock and poultry as well. 
Bill, I've something to show you. Yeah? Something that, to me, is very important. Will you read this? Sure. Well, Mel, this is an offer for a fellowship at the Agricultural College of the State University. Oh, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks, Bill. There's only one hitch in it. Oh? Professor Draper. Yes. If I accept this, oh, it'll hurt Gramps deeply. I suppose it will. Your grandfather seems to be dead set against you being anything but a research chemist, Mel. If you only knew how dead set he is. What really worries me is how Gramps feels. I don't want to hurt him, Bill. That is, not any more than I have to. What do you mean by that? Well, I feel that I should accept this fellowship. It's what I've dreamed about. Agricultural chemistry is what I've always loved. I'm not a research chemist, Bill, but... I don't want to break Gramps' heart because of my own ambitions. Mel, don't let this throw you. I think the bond of affection that you two have for each other will straighten the thing out eventually. You think so? Even though Gramps is what you might say... Well, stubborn? I think so. In fact, I'm sure it will with the Lord's help. I never thought of asking the Lord for help. I'm ashamed of myself. Well, the Lord can and will do great things if we ask him, Mel. What do you want me to do? How can I help? You just keep on doing a good job at the lab. Don't give up your feeding experiment either. I'll see what I can do to convince your grandfather. I hope you can. Let's pray before I leave, shall we, Mel? All right. I'm sure the Lord has a plan of his own to work this out. We want to be sure we're doing what he wants to do. Well, now you have the whole story, Ben. Yeah, I see. Uh, it's too bad to see a young man's ambition thwarted because of a hard-headed old man... Of course, I know the professor ain't gonna do this uh, to be mean, but, well, he's an old diehard. No question about that. Well, you got the heart of the problem right there, Ben. Will you ask the professor to have Mel write the story? I certainly will. I I'll call him right after lunch. Melvin, just think of it. The newspaper wants you to write an article on hypo-explosives. But, Gramps, you should write the article. It's your theory. Nonsense. You're working on it with me, aren't you? Oh, this will get your name right in public where it belongs. But, Gramps, I feel that I'm... I'm stealing your stuff. Stop talking like a child, Melvin. You just get busy on that article. Okay, if you say so... I'll start right away. Do my best. I know you will. Wait till my colleagues read this. They'll know then that my grandson's a real chemist. He's got the Draper blood in him. Dr. Petch, uh, what do you think of young Draper's article on his grandfather's hypo-explosive theory? Well, to be perfectly candid, Doctor, I think it's poorly prepared. He's certainly not a chip off the old block, I'd say. And your opinion, Professor Conlon? Quite of the same mind, Dr. Matthews. I feel that Draper is wasting his time with his grandson. Well, who's going to tell the old man? I hope we don't have to tell him. He'll ask our opinion. Yes... And I, for one, don't want to hurt Thaddeus. Point is, somebody have to tell him the truth sooner or later. Yeah, Dr. Matthews, what's the general feeling among the professors about the fine article Melvin wrote? Well, Thaddeus, it's certainly all right... What I mean is... You come, uh, come, Herbert. You can speak frankly. I'm sure you all agree that the article was well stated. Well, don't you? Speak up, man. 
Uh, Thaddeus, it hurts me to tell you, but since you insist, what I... What are you talking about? What hurts you? Come. Well, it's the consensus of opinion that Melvin has very little to recommend him in the field of research chemistry. Very little to recommend? A huge consensus of opinion is that. Who are you talking about? Your colleagues at the university. And how about you? I must say I'm in agreement with that opinion. Of all the blithering idiots, the lot of them. Why, I've taught every one of you from knee pants. This is an assassination. They're ruining Mel's career. Oh, your blustering won't help, Thaddeus. It won't change the consensus of opinion one iota. What? Melvin just doesn't have what it takes. Bill, I'm sure they're trying to put one over on me. They? Who, Doctor? I don't know, but whoever it is must think I'm not only old, but unconscious as well. How do you mean that? Well, somebody prompted Ben into asking me to have Melvin write that article. Yeah? Just to prove that Melvin is not a research chemist. I think he is. Just so I wouldn't stand in his way to accept the fellowship he's been offered. Well, I'd say that was a shrewd guess, don't you? But what this person doesn't know is that I can pull one out of the hat, too. What do you mean? Well, I've asked Melvin to bring me a sample of this, uh, this cow feed that he's working on. And I'm taking it to Alden Temple... He'll tell me whether or not Melvin's a chemist or a cattle dietitian. There is, I give it as my considered opinion, that this theory of your grandsons on cattle feeding is useless. And I would say that he has no talent in that field whatsoever. Bill, oh, it's no use. I just can't get ahead of Gramps. Alden Temple told Gramps my cattle feed wouldn't even make a good batch of bird seed. Hey, keep that chin up, young man. You're not discounting the Lord's part in it, are you? Perhaps I am, Bill. But I can't forget that Alden Temple is the best cattle expert in this part of the country. Yes, Alden Temple is an expert cattle judge. But he knows nothing about feeding. Are you sure, Bill? I'm positive. He's interested only in the finished product, not how you grow and develop it. Of course, he may think he knows, but he doesn't. So right there, Bill, Alden Temple proved that my colleagues were wrong. Melvin's not a cattle feeder, Bill. He's a chemist. Same as his father and his grandfather. Personally, I wonder about that, Doctor. Well, there's nothing to wonder about, Bill. It's simple as ABC. Certainly the article he wrote wasn't perfect. But the theory of the data are by no means fully developed or tested in the laboratory. Professor Draper, suppose someone could prove that Alden Temple is wrong. That he's wrong about Mel. That's impossible, Bill. The man's an expert. Yes, he's an expert, all right, but not in cattle feeding. What? What do you mean? He's an expert in judging cattle. There's no one better. But he knows very little about the formulation of feeding and the preparation of diet to put the prime finish on cattle. Well, well, well are you sure, Bill? I'm as sure as I know my own name. Well, I, I can't believe it. The, the man must know something about the feeding of cattle. Yes, he does know something, but not enough to give scientific opinion. Now you take a group of scientists who specialize in dairy feeding... Who are you thinking that... of? Well, there's Horace Pendleton and several others from the University Agricultural... Horace Pendleton? With that old seashell, is too crabby to give an opinion. Why do you mention him? For only one reason, Doctor. Because he's a genius in food chemistry. Both for humans and livestock. I got it, fellas. Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. Bill, this is Horace Pendleton. Oh, yes, Doctor. 
How are you? Uh, just fine, thank you. Uh, Bill, my understudies and I have completed our work on Melvin samples. Hey, that's good news. Uh, what's the verdict? Well, I'd rather hold that now until I can talk face to face with that old grizzly bear, Thaddeus Draper. We want his grandson there, too. Now, you make arrangements for a meeting at uh, uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon here at my laboratory. I certainly will. We'll be there. Melvin, is this dietetic uh, preparation all your own work? Why, yes, Dr. Pendleton, it is. You received no help from anyone? No, sir. I dreamed it all up myself. I didn't tell a soul what I was doing. Sounds to me like you disapprove of this preparation, as you call it, Horace. Is that right? On the contrary, Thaddeus. What? I personally think it's a fine piece of work. <laughs> You must be joking. You should know me well enough by this time to know that I do not joke about matters of science. Bill, did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, Mel, I did. Horace, I'm telling you, the lad's a research chemist, not a cattle feeder. Now, you listen to me, Thaddeus. And remember, I'm your senior. This feeding formula your grandson developed shows genius. Your grandson would be wasting his time as a research chemist. Do you know what you're saying? I've given Melvin the benefit of all of my knowledge. I want to make him the greatest research chemist in the field. And you sit there and attempt to tear down years of careful tutelage. That's why his father... That's where you're wrong. You're on the way to ruining your grandson's future. I'm doing what? I said you're ruining his life by trying to force him to do what you want him to do. Rubbish! He's a draper, isn't he? Yes, he's a draper. And it's a name to be proud of. But you can't pour his life into a test tube and drop a reagent in with it to make it do what you want it to do. Your grandson is not a laboratory experiment. He's a man. Melvin, is that what you think I'm doing with your life? Pouring it into a test tube? Tell me. I... Don't put I... him on the spot, Thaddeus. He thinks a great deal of you. But his life and ambitions aren't scientific data to do with as you please. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. Bill, shall we go? Science has no business interfering at this point. Melvin, since you're going to be an agricultural chemist, I want you to be the best agricultural chemist in the world. I'll try, Gramps. That's a promise. I'll make full use of my fellowship and try to be an associate professor just as soon as I can. Now, I want you to be proud of me. Dad, too, if he was living. Will you forgive your old grandpa for being such an old guy? Don't die say hard? it, Gramps. <laughs> Let's forget all about yeah, it. Yeah, you're just like your dad, Mel. And every day I'll thank the good Lord for a grandson like you. Say, look at Bill Jefferson over there. <laughs> he looks like the uh, cat that swallowed the canary. Well, Bill kind of helped. Uh, what I mean is... <laughs> sure, I know all about it. <laughs> you do? And you aren't angry at Bill Gramps? Angry? And I should say not, son. I'm grateful. A young diehard is bad enough, but an old one is ten times worse. Well, it was nip and tuck for a while, wasn't it? But Mel finally won out without hurting his grandfather. With the Lord's help, of course. Well, we'll see you next week for more adventure with... <laughs>